Good Sunday morning. Hey, this is Easter Sunday morning. Man, we all through the season of Lent, we've gone through Holy Week. We're going through Monday, Thursday. We come to the cross on the hill, and here we are on Sunday morning. Wow, what a, what a, what a power there is in this story for our lives. And we have one of the most powerful stories ever written as we read it, as you hear it, uh, from the Gospel of John. And I, I don't want to take any more time. I just want to get us right into this. This is so exciting, I think. And there's so much power in, in this story and for our lives. And there's so much hope that can come out of it. There's so much courage that we can gain. There's, there's so many things we can conquer. And just this story right now, take this resurrection story and make it a part of our lives and it's amazing what that would do for us. Okay, I, I, I just want to get in the 20th chapter, 18 verses. I know that's a lot of scripture, but I want to ask you, who this morning has read too much scripture? I, don't, I bet no one has. Anyway, 20th chapter of John, first verse. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. John was the younger one. Peter, the old fisherman, had a little hard time keeping up there. But he bent down and he looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there. But he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings laying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb, the tomb first, Peter, also went in and saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. I, I like that line, for as they yet had not understood the scripture that he must rise from the dead. I see it, but my mind can't wrap around it. And I have a feeling that for many of us, that becomes the truth as well, does it not? And, and let's go on. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. And when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabbani which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brother and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the word. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray that you'd open our hearts and our minds. 
that not only would we be hearers of your word, but that we would be doers of your word. And Lord, I pray that the words of my lips and meditation on my heart would be acceptable in your sight, my Lord, my rock, and my redeemer. Amen. You know, it's hard for us, like the disciples, to wrap our mind around this story, around the words that we have just heard. Our rational minds want to just say, we rebel against it. We, we, we might think, you know, we think the laws of nature should tell us that it cannot happen. And yet, it did happen. Mary was there and Mary saw. But it goes well beyond that. Because, you know, even with the disciples, you know, Peter and John, they had to struggle with it. The other disciples in the upper room, when Jesus came to them, Thomas said, I won't believe unless I'm able to touch his physical body. And then we know how that all worked out. It is a process that we go through. It is one that we struggle with. But it's one that when we really feel that presence in our hearts, when we really feel that Spirit of God with us, it's like nothing else. And we can say, I have seen the risen Lord because I have seen it in the works of the risen Lord. I have heard his voice in the words of the hymns. I have felt his presence in the times of my prayers and in the times I am with others that I cannot deny it. It is there and I surround it and I take my arms and I put around it because it's true. I have seen the Lord. What what a statement that is. And because Mary has seen the Lord, because I have seen the Lord, because you can say, I have seen the Lord. There's some truths that just, just grip us and, and give us power and courage that we can have in no other manner. Because of this, the resurrection, because of this resurrection, we know that truth is stronger than lies. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. You know, there's the people who wanted to get rid of Jesus, the people who said, no, this is just too much. This can't be true. Oh, they, they, they came and they said, this, this man must be of the devil because only he, he can't be God, so he must do his work some other way. Or he must be a magician, or he must be a storyteller. He must be a con man. They come around the village just trying to have big food for his words. And no, Jesus was no prophet. Jesus was no magician. And the reason we know that Jesus was no prophet, Jesus was no magician, Jesus was no con man, Jesus was not a false teacher, it's because Jesus isn't in the tomb. He is risen. And that put an end to those lies. He was neither prophet alone, nor priest alone, nor teacher alone. Jesus, the Son of God, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. Truth overcomes lies. And we know then that good overcomes evil because it was the evil that sent Jesus to the cross. It was the hatred and the evil of the screams of crucify him, crucify him at any cost. I don't want him in my life. I don't want him to come and change my life in any way. I don't want him to take anything away from me. I want me to be me. And I don't want to give any part of me away. <laughs> and we all know, don't we? Until we can give a part of us away, life isn't life. Until we can give a part of us away, that's when life becomes life. And good overcomes evil. The evil of the cross had to give away to the emptiness of the tomb. And there is no evil that God can't conquer. And then we know that love overconquers hate. 
because when they shouted crucify him and when they nailed him to the cross, he could look down from the cross and say, Father, forgive him for they don't know what they do. And this, it, it's, it, there is no one so evil. There is no one that has so much ugliness inside them that Jesus can't surround with arms of grace and arms of love. So that's so powerful for us because love overcomes hate. And the most powerful thing of all, perhaps, and what is the most powerful thing? Because of the empty tomb, we know that life overcomes death. They saw that empty tomb, and it changed their lives altogether. How can this be? I don't understand it, but it is. How can I believe I don't understand it, but it is? And because it is, we can give all of everything who we are, even if it causes the ultimate in our death. Because we all have an empty tomb that we will come and stand before God. That's amazing. That is so powerful. That's so amazing. You know what the truth is? We have not, <laughs> we have not been created to be victims of life. That's what it tells us. We have not been born to be victims of life. There is no danger. There is no disease. There is no harm. There is not even death that can conquer us because we were not made to be victims. We were made to be victors. And with the cause of the sign and the seal of that empty tomb, the resurrection of Jesus and the promises that he brings us into his heart, he brings us into his kingdom we can celebrate. We can take all of who we are and spend it completely for the sake of Jesus Christ. You know, people can live on the, in a safe zone. They, you know, you can draw yourself in. You can kind of bundle yourself up. Maybe even get yourself into a fetal position. Protect yourself. Be afraid. If someone's speaking lies, you're afraid to speak truth. What will people say if I speak the truth to those lies? If people want to hate you, I want to take revenge instead of learning how to love them. It's easier to do that. You don't have to take a chance. We can just stay bundled up and say, no, I'm not going to go out and I'm not going to become courageous. I'm going to play it safe. And that's truly when we lose our lives. It's only when we take part of us. It's only when we take part of us and spend it that we fully begin to live. And we live as victors. Like I'm saying, yeah, we're going to be tossed around. Yeah, there's going to be times we're knocked down on the ground. Yeah, there's going to be times that we have so much sadness in our souls we can only see darkness. Light overcomes darkness. Life overcomes death. Love overcomes hate. Truth overcomes lies. <laughs> Good overcomes evil. All these skirmishes, all these battles, they all melt away in the end. And we stand as victors with Jesus Christ. That's what's amazing. So we can spend our... You know, uh, in a book or in a series called uh, wrestling with Angels. Uh, Mar uh, Madeline Lalingle, the poet, uh, she had written something that I, I just really want to share with you at the end of this because I think it kind of sums up here what I'm trying to drive at and what I say the empty tomb is it has the power and the meaning for. So let me let, let me read exactly how she put it. Uh she speaks about a set of twins, and it's, it's, it's just amazing. She says that there were 
uh, twins who were discussing life, and she writes, The one twin says, I don't want to leave here. It is warm, and I don't have to feed myself. It's safe. I don't have to think what I will do. Nothing can harm me. All my needs are met. And the other twin says, Oh, I, I don't know about that. I've heard that there is something wonderful and marvelous out there, something far greater than we can imagine, and something worth leaving. Something worth leaving for, and it's called a mom. <laughs> and I think I want to find out what that is like. And I think I want to find out what that is like. There's something out there like a mom, something out there that's giving birth, something out there that's giving new life. That something out there that's giving new life happens to be Jesus Christ. And this is Easter Sunday, the day we celebrate that resurrected life and a new beginning for our life as well. <laughs> and and we you, you're going to hear the our, our I have a closing song for the day, the closing hymn. Jesus Christ is risen today, and it is our song to live life with. May God bless us. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray as we go this Sunday, this Easter Sunday, we will feel that power of your Spirit within us, and they will stand strong against whatever the world comes tossing at us, and we'll remember Mary standing at the tomb saying, I have seen the Lord that I too can say, I have seen the Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.